everybody, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I wanna show you guys how I put together this 3000 watt battery backup system so that even if the power goes out, you can keep your appliances running. Now this is a very simple system with two main components. On the top here, you have an all-in-one charger and inverter, and then that connects up to the batteries that are stored underneath. Now, just to give you guys an idea of what something like this is capable of, I've had this connected up to my transfer switch for the last 24 hours, powering both of my full-size refrigerators, and I still have power left over, and that's without any charging input. Now, if your power outage happens to go over 24 hours and you need to charge up your batteries, this all-in-one system has two built-in chargers. It has a MPPT solar charge controller that can top out at around 1600 watts, and it has a built-in AC charger so you can charge off a gas generator at around 1000 watts, and these can be combined together for a total of 2600 watts charging input. Now at this point in the video, I'm sure some of you are curious to how much money a system like this costs. If you guys have seen my previous content, you know I review a lot of off-the-shelf power stations from Blue Eddy and EcoFo and other brands, and I just wanna demonstrate how much money you can save by going with a DIY setup. For example, taking a look at the total cost, let's go ahead and break down each component. On the top here, we have a Sun Gold Power 24 volt, 3000 watt inverter, and it has a ton of features. You can pick this up on their website for around $600. Now to power that inverter, we have these batteries here. Now I am using two Power Queen 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries wired together in series for a 24 volt system. Now, if you were gonna do this on a budget, I would recommend purchasing four of the Power Queen 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries and wiring them together in a series parallel configuration. You can pick up those batteries for $1,200, which is around 23 cents a watt hour. So the total cost of your main components are gonna be right around $1,800. By the time you factor in the cost of this cart, your cabling, circuit breakers, and fuses, you're going to be closer to $2,100, which is only $0.41 cents a watt hour. Now, if you look at the cart, I have a second shelf here on the bottom, and for reference, I have put one of my 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. So just FYI, you can fit four batteries on each shelf. So if you wanted to upgrade your capacity down the road, you could purchase an additional four 100 amp hour batteries connected to the system for a total of 10,000 watt hours. So in the rest of the video, I'll do a brief tutorial of how I put this system together. It's very simple. I'll have all the parts that I purchased down in the video description. And after that, we'll do some basic testing to see if we get good quality output from this inverter and how it performs. Now, in order to show you guys how this is put together, I'm gonna remove these two screws and this front little panel will come off. So with the access panel removed, now you can see inside now there are only four main connections. You have your positive and negative battery connection that screw down on the inside here. On the left hand side, you have your AC input and AC output to both charge and discharge your batteries. And then on the right hand side, you have your solar panel input. So main positive and negative from your solar panels. Now the first step of the installation process was installing this AC charging cable. This is basically a 14 gauge extension cable that I purchased on Amazon. Now it came with bare wires on one end. I soldered them for durability, inserted them into the ring terminals and screwed everything down. Now the next step in the setup process is installing your AC output cable. This is where you're going to connect your appliances. So there are many different options here. Because I wanna connect this directly up to my transfer switch, I purchased this large RV style 10 gauge wire that supports 30 amps, cut it in half and installed the female end on the AC inverter output. My transfer switch has a male connection that plugs directly into this. Now just make sure that you're using the proper size of wire gauge. This puts out 3000 watts or around 25 amps. So you're gonna to wanna to use 10 gauge wire. Now just be aware during install, I did notice that there was no ground connection for your AC output. However, there is a grounding screw on the outside of the frame if you wanted to ground this out. Now, I highly recommend using solar panels to charge up your battery, so let me go ahead and break down this setup. Now, the SunGold Power Inverter can handle a maximum of 40 amps input via solar panels, and they do recommend installing a DC circuit breaker in line with your wiring. Now, I purchased this 250 volt, 40 amp DC circuit breaker, and I am using 10 gauge wire because my solar panel array is limited below 30 amps. If you wanted to use the maximum 40 amps, you would have to use eight gauge wire here. Now, just in case there's an issue, this will pop right off, which is really nice. And for the solar connection, I am using an XT90 style connector. This is easy to disconnect and reconnect. It can handle quite a bit of power and they are fairly durable. 
Now the last step of the installation is hooking up your main positive and negative battery connections to the inverter. Now we're going to see around 125 amps to 135 amps depending on what the voltage of your battery is if you're pulling peak power. So it's important to use the proper size wiring. I decided to go with one aught cable. This can handle up to 150 amps. Now it's very important that you install a fuse on the positive connection. So I installed a 200 amp fuse here in case something gets shorted out. Now, whenever you're working on a project like this, you have two options for cables. You can make your own custom cables or you can purchase these prefab cables from an online retailer like Windy Nation. But I decided to go with custom cabling this time. Basically, I purchased a hydraulic crimper a few months ago and I wanted to use it. So I cut the cables to length, stripped back the insulation and crimped on the connections. And you can see it gives a really good end result. And it's just nice to have cables the exact length you want. Okay, well now that we have these custom cables completed, it's time to connect the batteries up to the inverter. Now right here I have two 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries from PowerQueen. Now my plan is to connect these two together in series, but you just wanna be very careful and take the precautions necessary as you connect these up so you don't have any issues. For example, you wanna have some rubber insulated gloves, you wanna be wearing eye protection, and you don't want any of your tools to touch the metal cart or to short the batteries out. Now I have both these batteries connected in series now. So we have a main negative connection for the inverter and we have a main positive connection for the inverter. We're gonna go ahead and connect the main negative first. Okay, so I have the main negative connection made here and we are done with that. So we have one last connection. We have to connect this positive to this positive. Now, if you've ever connected up a large inverter, there's some large capacitors inside and usually you'll get a massive spark when you connect up this final connection. Now, one way to stop that is by putting in a large resistor. This is a five ohm, 10 watt resistor. We are going to connect these two together so that the power will slowly transfer into the inverter so we don't get a humongous spark here. So we'll go ahead and see if we can get this on camera. Okay, so I have the main connection tightened up here. So we have our main negative, our main positive. I'm gonna go ahead and get a voltmeter to see what the voltage is to make sure everything is good there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insulate the junk out of this so I don't short it out on anything else. Okay guys, I have that main connection insulated. I also took the time to put on the cover for the access panel. So it's time to turn it on for the first time. So we basically have a rocker switch here. Just flip that on. Okay, good news, we're getting lights there. Now we do have to set this up to work with lithium iron phosphate. All that information is in the owner's manual. So what I wanna do now is go through all the settings, get it set up, and then I'm gonna test the voltage output, the sine wave, and to see how much power it uses as it sits idle. And then we'll go ahead and connect it up to my transfer switch and do a little bit more thorough testing. Okay guys, look at this sine wave, super clean, 112 volts RMS, that's really good, 60 hertz, uh, impressive sine wave here. Let's go ahead and test the voltage. Okay, we're also getting 120 volts output. Pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and see how much power it's using just sitting idle. Okay, so with the clamp meter on the main positive with the inverter sitting idle, we're pulling right around 1.2 amps. So that's right around 35 watts. So not as bad as some of the larger power stations. Now with that basic testing out of the way, I went ahead and connected it up to my transfer switch. So now I just need to activate two of the circuits. I'm gonna test my two fridges first. So that circuit, and that circuit, those are my two fridges. So let's go ahead and let that run for 24 hours. This is fully charged up. Let's see what it looks like when I come back in 24 hours. 24 hours later. Okay, so it's been 24 hours and the inverter's still running. Now we started with the total voltage around 27.2 volts. Now we're down to 26.3. Now you have to keep in mind, lithium iron phosphate has a very flat voltage line. And with this battery indicator here, it's showing that we lost around 25%. There's no actual battery percentage on this. Would have been nice to see that. But basically we used about 25 to maybe 35% of the battery capacity over that 24 hour period. And it is winter time here. So our fridges don't have to run that often. So in the summer, I would have expected to use a lot more of the battery capacity. So now that we've confirmed that this will run small loads without any issues, I do wanna see how far I can push it to see how loud the fans are. And also I wanna test some charging. So we'll test with AC wall charging and we'll see if we can have the sun show up. It's been cloudy for weeks, but if we do get some good sun, I can test with solar charging as well. Okay, so the next test that I'm doing is a max load test on the AC inverter. I'm currently pushing 2,400 watts through the system. 
And I'll tell you guys, I have a limiting factor here. One of my batteries only has a 100 amp BMS. The other one has a 200 amp BMS, so I can only push 100 amps through the system. And I'll show you guys, I'm pretty close to that. So with my clamp meter here, we are right on the limit. We're pulling 100 amps through this wire, which means my BMS is really close to shutting off. So this battery here, I've taken it out of the case just so it fits in here. But this one can take up to 200 amps, and this battery only has a 100 amp BMS in it, so it can only take 100 amps continuous. So this is our weak link in the system. Now on one of the circuits, I'm charging this new power station that I'm testing. This is the FossiBot 2400. And one thing that I really like about this is this has an adjustable charging rate. So I have it currently set to 900 watts charging input. So this is charging off one of the circuits. I also have some of my office lights and some other gadgets running off this circuit. Now another power station that I'm charging up is the EcoFlow Delta Max. You can see I'm charging at around 1000 watts and I have this connected to a different circuit. I'm using a 12 gauge extension cable. So these are our two main loads running off that inverter right now. Now coming back to the inverter, you can see we're pulling around 2.4 kilowatts or right around 2400 watts continuously through the inverter and it's handling it just fine. Now in order to get the full 3000 watts from this system, you'd have to make sure your batteries could handle over 100 amps continuous. And I'm using these two batteries that I already had laying around. So if I wanted to do this fresh, I'd probably purchase four separate 100 amp hour batteries, put two sets in parallel and then connect those in series. And I'd be able to run 200 amps through those batteries without an issue. Now I also had a chance to test out the AC charging input by plugging this inverter into my AC 500. The charger was pulling right around 1270 Watts from the power station. And looking at the display on the inverter, it was putting around 1,080 watts back into the batteries. So that's around 85% charging efficiency. Now it was charging at the max limit of 40 amps, confirmed by both my clamp meter and by the inverter display. And when charging, the fans are a bit loud, sitting right around 62 decibels at three feet away. So this is what it sounded like. Now I really wanted to do some solar testing with this charger inverter, but unfortunately the weather has not been cooperating. We've had constant snow showers and clouds for a couple weeks now. And I have this really nice uh, portable array that I wanted to plug into this because this doesn't go over hundred volts. But unfortunately right now I'm only getting like 90 Watts out of this. So uh, we'll have to try the solar testing another time. Now this lack of solar charging brings up a really good point. There are going to be times when solar isn't a viable option and your batteries are almost empty. For any home backup solution, you need multiple charging options and you can't rely on only one power source. Now, as we come to the end of this video, I just wanted to give you guys some pros and cons about this setup. Now, I really like the power output. We had a really good sine wave, 120 volts, 60 hertz, and it really did power everything that I threw at it. The only thing that I didn't like was just how loud the fans are, but with such a small unit here and small fans, they have to run at a higher RPM so they can move adequate air through the unit to keep it cool. Now, basically the whole purpose of this video was to show you guys that with just a few components, you can put something together to keep keep your appliances running during a power outage. You know, if you wanted to power full size refrigerators, microwaves, you know, blow dryers, uh, TVs, whatever it is that you want to power during a power outage, something like this is definitely capable of doing that job. Now you don't even have to have a transfer switch uh, or an interlock. You can basically wire in a surge protector and plug your devices in via extension cables. That's a great way to do it as well. I just use the transfer switch because I already have it installed. Nowadays, we have so many different options when building a backup DIY system like this. For example, you go with a 12 volt inverter, 24 volt inverter, or even a 48 volt inverter. Now I chose to go with the 24 volt inverter because it's fairly simple and it's kind of more of a budget oriented product. If you want the best performance, you do have to step it up to the 48 volt inverters with the stackable lithium iron phosphate server rack batteries, but you will spend quite a bit more money uh, than what you would on a system like this. This does offer a UPS backup functionality. 
Um, it does offer dual charging and it has time of day charging settings. So if you guys wanna learn more about this inverter, I will have the link to it down in the video description. I'll also include the links to any of the other parts or components that I used in this build. Now this is a really fun project. Uh, I'd love to get your guys' feedback. What would you guys uh, change? How would you do it differently? What would you guys like about this project? Uh, throw a comment down below. And I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the content. And hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Till next time.